In this video, I am going to download and provision Jabber for Windows um, in Call Manager 12.5. Um, so the very first thing you're going to need is the Jabber install file. So if you have a Cisco account, you can get that right from Cisco's site. If not, you'll have to find that somewhere else on the web. Um, I think that should be out there somewhere. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and install this. The version that I am downloading is 14-0-3. So I'm going to install that. And I have to log in. I'm going to pause it and log in quick. Okay, I logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and accept the license agreement. And that is going to start downloading a zip file, 153 megabytes. So that might take a little bit to download. I'll pause that and let it finish. And that finished, so I'm going to show in folder, extract all, just so that same folder is fine. So now I have the Cisco Jabber install FFR. I am going to run the Cisco Jabber setup.msi, accept and install. Screen probably went black, I had to accept uh, admin setting. But this installer, you don't really need to choose anything. It will just run, and then it's going to start Cisco Jabber at launch. So I will go ahead and click Finish, and I get this. Um, but before we mess around with this at all, there's a couple things that we have to do. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is edit the host file on my desktop computer. Um, if you have DNS, um, you can skip this step and just make sure that you have the host name of your call manager actually in, um, in your DNS as a record. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. So in my call manager 10.0.0.10, .0 .0, uh, I'm sure it'll be different in whatever you're using. I'm going to go to system and server. And you'll see I have the name I gave it is lab cucm dash one so I need my computer doesn't know where that is um, let's see what I mean I'm going to go ahead and ping lab dash c u c m dash o one and that's gonna hang because it does not know where that is so what I'm gonna do is go to the host file um, and let's see so I can find it window host I'm just going to search for that here. Um, and if you search for that, it will show you the directory where that is. And I'm going to press um, Windows E, which will open File Explorer. And then in the quick access bar, I'm going to paste this link right here. And that will bring me right to where that is found. So I'll paste that in and click enter. And here is the host file. So I'm going to open that with notepad and click OK. And down here, right under the hash mark, I'm going to first put in the IP address of the call manager, 10.0.0.10. Then I'm going to click or hit tab and I'm going to put in the host name of my call manager server. So lab-cucm-01 and so the folder that I just got this out of is this this etc folder we can't save there if I try to do that it's gonna give me a warning I'll do it save oh maybe it's not okay Let me just make sure that those settings are in. Okay, so for me, it did not give me a warning. I think I messed around with the security enough so that it worked. However, you might get an error. Um, so what you can do in that case is go to File, Save As, and then you can actually put this right on your desktop. So keep this open. The same path with the Etc folder. And then let's go to the desktop, and here is that file. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this .txt extension. Click yes. Then I have this 
Same path, open in File Explorer. I'm going to delete this one, and it will allow me to put that file in there. So if you got an error when you tried to save that host file, go ahead and follow that process that I just did. And now we can verify that that is, um, that the changes we made were saved. And there it is. And then we can do further verification. So if I go back into command prompt, and once again, ping lab-cucm-01, now we should get a response. And there we are. Okay. So that's good. So now we can communicate with the call manager by host name, which will be important when we try to log into Jabber and you will, you will see why later. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is set up the user and call manager. So I call manager open again. I'm going to user management and user. This is a brand new uh, lab installation. So there are no users in here. And so I'm just going to, create one called John Doe. So you need a user ID. So now it's J Doe. You also need a password. So remember what this is because you will need it when you try to log in. And a last name. And just a note, if you already have users um, in here, if this is a production environment, you know, you don't have to recreate a user. You can just uh, skip this part of the video or you can skip creating it. Um, but follow along because there are some things down here that you will have to do. Um, let's see. So service settings need to make sure you enable user for unified CM, IM and presence. And then make sure that you click enable mobility and save scroll back down after you've saved and now there's this new section here the permissions information and i need to add to access control group and i'm going to use standard ccm end users and scroll down and standard ctm CTI enabled. So I will add those and click save. Okay, so the important things, I'm just going to review them again quick. If you already have the user created, you just need to make sure that you have home cluster clicked, enable user for uh, CM, I am in presence, that's clicked, allow control of device from CTI, enable mobility, and then these two groups as well standard CCM, standard CC, CTI enabled. With that taken care of, we can now go on to creating the Jabber device in Call Manager. So if I go to Device, Phone, and I'm going to click Add New. And then I'm going to have to scroll way down to Cisco Unified Services Framework. Way down here. And here it is. Cisco Unified Client Services Framework. That's the type of device that Jabber will use. So I'm going to click Next. And I'm going to call this CSF J Doe. I'm just going to describe it as John Doe Jabber. Device pool, default. Um, and you do need to put in a phone or button template, standard client services framework. And um, once again, if you already have, if this is a production environment, you're going to put in your calling search space. I don't have one because this is a brand new installation. Um, <clears throat> so that's all for this part. There are a couple other things we have to save though. And this is a long, there's a lot of settings on this page. So I like to press control plus F and uh, start typing security profile. And that will take you to protocol specific information as you need to choose a device security profile. So I'm gonna choose this one, Cisco Unified Client Services Framework. And then there's another thing that you need right here in this section, and that is SIP profile. And I'm going to use standard SIP profile. And then I should be able to hit save. Oh, no, actually, sorry. Most important part, I forgot. Um, scroll all the way back up to the top, and we need to set the owner user ID 
as the owner that we just created. Now I should be able to hit save. Yep. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a directory number. This is where if you had this request for a user that already exists, you would add their directory number. Um, for this lab, I'm just gonna give it 1000. And I don't have any partitions created. Um, and I had this directory number existing, so it started to autofill. But if you're doing this production, just make sure you put in your voicemail profile, your calling search space. That's gonna be very important. Um, all of your forwarding information. Make sure you set that up. And all this, the line text display, external phone mask if you need it. I always like to click these and I'm gonna click save. So our Jabber profile is now all set up. We should, if we did everything correctly, now be able to set up the application itself. Now, in um, you can set this all up if you have a DNS server so that if the user is on the domain, if their computer is on the domain, um, when you open the Jabber application, it will find the services automatically and the servers and bring them straight to the login page. However, for this lab environment, none of that is set up. So um, that's okay. We can just put in that information manually. So I'm gonna go to advanced settings and Cisco communications manager, nine or later for account type then the login server use the following server this is the server of my call manager i'm going to go ahead and click save and then this is kind of funky you have to put in a domain name so like an email address you have to put in the the jdo because i just created jdo but you have to have this in a full domain fqdn so I believe you can put in whatever you want here. I'm just going to put in uptime network and voice.com um, and continue. And it found the services. One thing, um, I already ran through all this install and uh, I, I did uninstall Jabber, but it holds on to its configuration. So you might have seen an error that said uh, something about certificate invalid. That's okay, go ahead and click through that. It's just we have not submitted the certificate from call manager to assert authority. But we know that it's safe, so we can go ahead and click accept, okay, and go on to the next step. So here's where you're gonna put in that password for JDO and sign in. And it worked. You can go through these if you want. Um, but yeah, you can see that John Doe Jabber 1000 is set up. Got the green light for call settings. And if we had other, uh, you know, if we had the whole phone system set up, we could start making calls. Uh, I hope that this uh, video was very helpful for you. Um, if you liked it, please uh, click subscribe and like. And um, if you had trouble, go ahead and put them in the comments. I will uh, pay attention and um, hopefully I can give you a hand. Thanks again for watching.